I'll, I'll handle it. Eddie, you just kind of... Oh, no, no! <laughs> you got this! Oh, no. You got it. It's going to go. <laughs> I need the thumb strength. Okay. Don't run out of film. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. Yeah, good yeah. job. Oh. Did you really have your sunglasses on your head? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's, it kind of came Eddie's got the whole bottle. That's fitting. <laughs> To my best friend and the love of my life. Meeting you 2,904 days ago was the single greatest moment of my 35 years on earth. I am so glad that I waited for you outside that yogurt shop. As our wedding song says, some things are meant to be. I can only think about how beautiful you will look in your wedding dress this morning and how excited I am to see you in a few hours. No matter what, we will always find our way back to each other, and I always just try to find the good in the other person. Our love will weather anything. Although I love to think about what a strong foundation we have built, I know deep inside that even if the whole foundation collapsed into the sand, that we would be able to sit in the sand and take in the sunset together. I am honored to commit my life to you and our awesome wapper. It doesn't matter if we are on a beach in Greece or on the porch on a dreary western Pennsylvania day. The sun is always brighter when you are around. The thing I look forward to most is growing together with you as a person. I am really not sure where I would be without you. You taught me what it is. It's okay to love someone more than life, and I will forever be grateful for that. I have a one in a seven billion chance of finding my soulmate. That is the luckiest lottery ticket anyone could have ever purchased. Love you forever. Never hug me. Uh, I can do it.
my soon-to-be husband Jacob. It is a hard day. It is hard to believe that it is finally our wedding day. It has been a year of trials and tribulations, but they were well worth it for this moment with you. I can still remember talking to you through Badu dating application in the summer of 2014, and then moving to texting through our phones shortly after. I do not recall our text being too flirty, but rather they were continual streams of memes and edited pictures to make the other laugh. Early on, I knew I had found something special in you because our witty meme exchange was not only laugh out loud worthy, but showed that we could have fun together. I have included some gems that I found through my OneDrive memories for you to look back on. After looking through old photos, I realized our memes typically included one of the following themes. Cats, WWE, and or inappropriate contraband involving Shrek. Needless to say, our sense of humor has not advanced too far over the years. Eight years later, and we still managed to have the same spark of fun together. However, I would like to bring back the occasional meme exchange. In this time, we have both grown and had setbacks, but we have never given up on one another. That strength and resiliency our relationship ha has can only be described as true love. I am so happy and blessed to have, lucky, to have been lucky enough to find you because it brought me endgame love. Our journey was not an easy one, but we both know and believe that nothing great can come without work and sacrifice. Our life will be full of continued effort and sacrifice. But I know in my heart that we will conquer all obstacles that come our way together. I love you, Jacob Buck, and I now am now going to further elaborate as to why, because I'm sure sometimes I'm sure sometimes you wonder. Winky face emoji. They say that the eyes are windows to the soul, and I have come to believe that adage by looking into your beautiful brown eyes. Your eyes tell the story of how you are feeling, and there is nothing like seeing them sparkle when you are truly happy. You also have the purest heart and work hard to show love and compassion to both humans and animals. Not only is your heart pure, but you have one of the best, best senses of humor and your laugh is as contagious as your smile. Not only can you brighten my day with your humor, but you are also my built-in Google. I answer a lot of questions for her on Google. Um, I, I, she doesn't know that, but I actually cheat when she asks me something and, and Google search stuff. So I just seem like I'm an expert. Um, you are not, you're one of the smartest people I've ever met and there are many, not many questions that you do not know how to answer. What separates, separates you from the other smart people in the world is that you do not gatekeep your intelligence. You have the gift of teaching and can break even the most complex of problems and easy to understand metaphors and stories. Every time I look at you, I imagine you as a father and it makes my heart happy because you are going to be one of the good ones. Our first child, Bella, our cat, can attest to your parenting abilities and has told me on numerous occasions how much she loves you. She still remembers fondly the home you built for her as a kitten to make her feel safe and loved that night. I cannot predict the future, but I know we have a bright one ahead of us. We can turn even the most dismal days into something beautiful. I cannot wait to walk down the aisle later today and see you waiting for me at the end. And then she said, uh, Shares a Bible verse. I have found the one whom my soul loves. Psalm Solomon 3 4. Love your soon to be wife.
which can be found in your blue handles at number 86. Number 86.
said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. But it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine, but does not act on them, will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's great to be with you all today. Uh, Jacob, Erica, and also your families, your parents, uh, and your friends who are all gathered here. Uh, this very joyful occasion you know, as we sang Hallelujah. It's a joyful time, and we sung that from our hearts uh, while we're here. I'm a relatively young priest. Uh, I know my hairline kind of suggests otherwise. In my way, you might think I'd be 65, but I'm only in my 30s. And so I often go to older priests uh, for advice. I like to ask older priests just for a little bit of wisdom regarding things. And regarding marriages, I once went up to a priest when I was first ordained to pick his brain. And I said to him, Do you have any advice, any suggestions, any tips, any pointers when it comes to weddings? And he said to me, yes, I have one tip. I said, well, what is that? And he said, whatever you do, don't preach too long. <laughs> don't give a long homily. And I said, well, you know, I don't intend to bore everybody in the church to death, but why do you recommend that I give a short homily? And he said to me, because nobody came to the wedding to hear you talk. <laughs> nobody is here today for me. You've all come here today. Erica and Jacob. You've come not necessarily to hear what I have to say, but to hear what they have to say as they express their love for one another, as they exchange vows and rings. And so with that piece of advice, I'll try to be as much as I can, kind of to the point here. Now, Erica and Jacob, you guys, I think, are a pretty interesting combination. Erica, you're a teacher, and you know very well firsthand that it's not important for your students just to hear what you have to say, but it'd be in their best interest to actually follow them. It'd be very wise of them to follow the instruction that you give as a teacher. And Jacob, you're a geologist, correct? Among many, many other things. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the importance of a firm foundation. You know that when it comes to construction or building anything, type of rock that it sits on. In our gospel we just heard, Jesus spoke to us about the importance of not just listening to what he said as a good teacher, but to follow it, to act on it, and that those who do are building their lives on a firm foundation. When the storms come, when the rains and floods and winds of this life hit us, if our lives are known in truth, if our lives are really founded in Jesus Christ, we stand firm, we stand steady, and we reach the goals that we have. I'd like to speak today just a little bit about that foundation. And it's a foundation of love, and it's a particular type of love. So I would want to speak about today also related to you both as a couple. Now, Eric and Jake, up until this point, your relationship, I would say, has been a matter 
of falling in love. You first met back in 2014. You went on your first date. Sincerely younger, right around here in Cranberry. Uh, if you didn't know this, Erica showed up to the first date two hours late. Pretty impressive. Now, me personally, I'm a single priest, but had I been on a date, I probably would have left after 30 minutes. Jacob, not the case. He had a long day at work, and he decided to take an almost two hour nap in the car. So it ended up working out. They didn't kind of split up at that first moment, but continued on the date, completed it, and really sparked an initial chemistry, which was a beautiful thing. I would say it's a kind of a miracle that you two even started out from that kind of a first date. And then from there on, you guys continued dating. You continued to get to know one another, doing the things that you enjoy, hiking, traveling, all sorts of things. And then finally, in 2021, just a year ago, a little bit more, you proposed, Jay. And it was a very romantic, playful experience. It was also a complete disaster in some ways. Nothing went according to plan, as you guys explained. You attempted to go skiing at Seven Springs. You struggled to get on the ski lift, I believe. Lost some skis, kind of had a fall off. You guys had multiple children. <laughs> and eventually ended up walking down the hill, not even skiing down. So, not exactly what was planned. But what was planned, and what was the heart of this trip, did come to fruition. Jacob did finally propose to the very romantic place uh, out in the nature, although. Even that kind of messed up. You mentioned setting up a cell phone and having that fall over at one point. So this proposal that was intended to be recorded didn't even happen. All we had was a little bit of audio wind and some snow in the mic. But it was a very special moment. And you've had these kind of key moments in your relationship. The first date, the continued dating, and finally the climactic moment of the proposal. Up until your point, up until this point, your relationship, as I mentioned, has very, very much been a matter of falling in love. But today, as you've come into the church, it's a matter of remaining in love. I think every relationship, every kind of experience of dating that we have, it begins with romantic elements. There are those first dates, there is that initial excitement of a new relationship, of knowing that the love you have for someone else the way you feel about someone else is reciprocated. And that kind of romantic love is something that's very beautiful. It's heartwarming. It's the spark that starts any relationship. But selfless love, sacrificial love, full self-giving love is the pull that keeps the fire burning. Christian love, Christ-like love, as he showed us on the cross, it's not solely about how we feel. It's much more than that, as important as our feelings are. Christian love is about what we do. St. Paul described this love in our second reading, saying, Love is patient. Love is kind. It's not selfish. It doesn't seek its own interests. It doesn't hold grudges. It doesn't brood over injury. It endures all things, it bears all things, and it forgives. St. Paul, as he mentioned, love, hardly mentioned any emotions. He spoke about what love does in action, what it accomplishes, what it's willing to endure. In Jacob and Erica, you two have most certainly fallen in love. I can see that in the way you look at each other, uh, the way you talk to one another, even when I met with you, you mentioned every conversation you have, there's never a war moment involved. You've fallen in love, there's no doubt about that. But beginning today, you're called to remain in love. This isn't the end of your journey. This is just a milestone along the way. You build your relationship today on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ as you come to be married in the church. And you have a lot more building to do. You could ask any married couple in here 
that relationships take a lot of work. But if your love continues to be built on the love of Christ, the love that He showed us on the cross, a love that's not just about how we feel, which can come and go, but a love that's about self-giving and sacrifice and selflessness, then you'll be continuing to build your relationship on a very firm foundation. Stay close to Christ, and you'll stay close to one another. And I'm going to please stand if you come to the center room. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into the marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Jacob and Erica, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live. I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and His Church? I am. Since it's your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, please now face each other and join your hands and declare your consent before God and His Church. I, Jacob, take you, Erica, take you, Erica to, be my wife. to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you. To love you. And to honor you. And to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Erica. I, Erica. Take you, Jacob. Take you, Jacob. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you. To love you. And to honor you. And to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness, strengthen and consent you have declared before the church, and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put aside. May the Lord bless these rings that you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Erica, receive this ring. Receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Dick and Eric are now going to let a unit be in, but we heard in our first reading uh, that God created man and woman, not by accident, not by coincidence, uh, but by his providence with great intent. And he formed them as one. The two became one flesh. And this candle is a great symbol that Eric and Jacob have now been united as one.
that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth and baptism gives increase to the church through Christ our Lord. Through him with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us humbly invoke by our prayers, dear brothers and sisters, God's blessing upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the sacrament of matrimony. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, who created man and woman in your own image and will that their union be crowned with your blessing. We humbly beseech you for these your servants who are joined today in the sacrament of matrimony. May your abundant blessing come down upon this bride, Erica, and upon Jacob, her companion for life. And may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may adorn their family with children and enrich the church. In happiness, May they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil, and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the holy assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surrounds them, may they come to the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
by the power of this sacrifice of the Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make of one heart and love those who have already joined in this holy union through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we finish up here, I'm just going to end uh, with a final blessing over our couple, the newlyweds here. And uh, the blessing also, of course, goes to everyone gathered here, most especially to you both of us. So if you could please kneel again. And if everyone would please bow their heads and pray for God's blessing. May God the eternal Father keep you of one heart and love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, everybody who's gathered here obviously knows Erica and Jacob, uh, but I now present them to you as a new couple, as Mr. and Mrs. Spock.
got the bride's brother, Ryan, Mr. Sexy Boy. <laughs> Falling in love with 
I mean, uh, he's, a, he's, he's just a great guy. I mean, I'm, I'm proud to actually, you know, call him one of my sons, too. I mean, he's, he's just that type of person. I, I, you know, couldn't be happier for, for Eric after that. Um, again, we also have enjoyed, you know, watching the love between you both grow. It's a lucky person who not only finds a life partner, but a best friend as well. And that's what you two are. Uh, and that's what we see in both of you, not only husband and wife, but best friends. Uh, so I will end my speech by asking everyone to raise their glasses in a toast. Here's to the past for all of you that have learned. Here's to the present for all that you share. Here's the future for all that you look forward to together. Mom and I are very proud and love you both. Cheers! Cheers! Okay, well, I'm just going to go here. Um, <laughs> first of all, I, I guess there's one thing that Jake and Eric have in common uh, that I, I didn't quite realize initially here, but they're both the first to catch the fish. I know when, when Jordan and I would go fishing with Jacob, Jacob was always the first person to catch a fish. And so now I guess... <laughs> and last very often. Um, but no, I, I do want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, as Ed has said, many of you have traveled a great distance and we really appreciate that. Um, we appreciate you being here to celebrate this day for Erica and Jacob, um, which is in a, a sense, as uh, Father DJ put it, you know, it's not the end of a journey. It is actually sort of a midpoint in a, in a journey, uh, and a long and healthy and happy journey, uh, and that's what we're all here to celebrate. Uh, I do want to uh, take a moment and just uh, recognize that there are some people who <laughs> who would love to be here who aren't. Um, excuse me. I know my mom and dad. I should have practiced this before. <laughs> no, but my mom loved a party. <laughs> so uh, she is, uh, you know, of course she's passed away and so is my dad, but they would have loved to have seen this day. I do know that um, Karen's dad, who passed away recently, would have loved to have been here and enjoyed a few Coors Lights and would have enjoyed your day. Um, I think others, uh, Chris's mom, Avenel, who is not able to be here with us, uh, again, would have loved to see this celebration. Uh, so I think that, um, you know, this is a, it's, it's a very special day for the two of you. Uh, it's also a very special day for all of our families. And um, I, I just want to thank, again, everybody for being here. And um, and I guess I guess on a uh, on a couple just a couple closing notes, Erica, we are thrilled to have you. <laughs> um, you're not only beautiful, you're beautiful inside, and um, I think that um, well, at least I know one person that is a hell of a lot happier to have a little more estrogen in the uh, family and a little less of the testosterone. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> but I uh, just wanted to, 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 you know, thank everyone, and again, you know, you're a beautiful couple, you have a beautiful life ahead of you, and we look forward to sharing that with you. Thank you. We turn to the Lord, who is ever faithful and loving, and who hears us when we pray. We thank you, Lord, for all of your gifts and blessings. We thank you for the gift of marriage. We pray that day by day, Eric and Jacob will grow ever stronger in bonds of love and fidelity. We pray, Lord, that the marriage of Eric and Jacob be a blessing for families, their friends, and for all neighbors. We pray that this day of marriage may be filled with wonder and in time be a source of inspiring and happy moments and that god will assist all married couples 
and give them joy. We thank you, Lord, for the food we're about to eat and for the opportunity to share it in this meal as God's adopted children. Loving God, you are the author of marriage, and so we ask you to watch over all married couples, especially Erica and Jacob. May each day of married life bring them closer to you because of your continuing guidance and care. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, so for those of you that don't know me, I'm Erica's brother, Eddie. I am the man of honor. And today we're here to celebrate the marriage of my, the marriage of my sister Erica and Jake. And uh, believe it or not, ever since they got together, Erica and Jake have been a pretty big part of my life. Um, Erica and Jake, actually, halfway through college, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with my career. Uh, both of them kind of helped me figure out that I wanted to pursue geology. And uh, just to go off on a tangent, um, on my first big school project, uh, Erica had Jake come out and help me out. Uh, to summarize it, we had to identify some rock layers out in the field. And uh, I remember, so we drove out to McConnell's Mills, uh, Moraine State Park, and someplace on the side of a highway. And I remember at McConnell's Mills, we got yelled at by some lady. And we basically found nothing and got just about nothing done. <laughs> it was then later that Jer or Jake told me that uh, that's a pretty normal day for a geologist. <laughs> but um, this speech mainly is about my wonderful sister Erica. And, um, you know, I always remember growing up, you know, we've always been best friends with each other. And um, I remember one time, you know, I was about 12. She was about 15, and uh, we were we would always go on vacations to the Outer Banks, uh, North Carolina, and um, you know we would wait around in the water, and we ended up finding a bunch of hermit crabs, and you know I don't know if it was my idea or Erica's, but uh, it was one of ours to start a hermit crab farm <laughs> at our rental house. So we collected a bunch of hermit crabs, 12, 15. And we made a little perimeter with the rocks. We set them in there. And, you know, I, I hope Pete is not here, but it was later we found out that you need water for hermit crabs to survive. <laughs> so I don't think either of, the, either of us would make very good hermit crab farmers. <laughs> and uh, I also remember, you know, growing up, we didn't have too many neighbors, few and far between. So we would always hang out with each other. And one thing we used to do when we were younger, uh, we would make obstacle courses with things we found in our father's garage. And I'm sure he was thrilled about that. But um, Eric would beat me most of the time. And I remember one time I got upset and I ended up spraying her with a hook. Um, but she was a good sport about it. But, you know, Eric has always been someone I can look up to. And someone to set the bar for me so that I could better myself. And uh, my point of these stories is that when we were having fun as children, you would see the biggest smile on my sister's face. And, you know, getting married, you always wonder, you know, is this the one? Well, Erica, I can tell you that I'm very sure that this is the one because I see that same smile on your face that I saw when we were younger. Conclusion. Uh, I'm very happy for the both of you and the opportunity you gave me to be a part of your wedding. Uh, today, my brother Ryan and I have a new member of the family, Jake. And uh, so if everybody would please uh, raise your glasses, I'd like to make a toast. To Eric and Jake, I love you both, and I wish you a lifetime of happiness and well-being. For those of you that don't know me, I am Jake's brother, and I'm really honored to be here tonight to give him his speech. My name's Jordan. <laughs> so, good evening, family and friends of Jake and Erica. I want to thank everyone for being here to celebrate Jake and Erica's nuptials. I know we are especially appreciative of Sharon and Ed for their contribution and hard work in helping to plan the wedding. 
Dad, Karen, and Mom, this is your shout out too, but we know if this wedding was fully left to the spots, that we'd probably end up at the Grange and Reynolds bill for about $70 a day. I know if that one hit. Erica, you look beautiful. I'm excited to have you as part of my family and as a sister. Jake, you look great too, but you're probably past your prime if we're being honest. <laughs> I was writing it, I was thinking at least five years. And maybe. I've known Jake most of my life, and he's known me all of his. When I first started brainstorming the speech and thinking of stories, I'll be honest. I was like, I think I gotta take at least a few weeks away from Jake in case he pisses me off. <laughs> Our story would come to mind, and I'd think, hey, doesn't he still owe me money for that? And I know right now, as I'm saying this, he has stories in mind that he's thinking about. We'll settle up later on that. But you see, when I think about what makes my brother special, one word in particular comes to mind. And that word is determination. You see, my brother Jacob will never quit. For many years, this is one reason that even I always thought twice about crossing him. Many people did. They knew that there was a decent chance they would end up getting choked out in the back of a parking lot at 2 a.m. I know there's a few guys in the crowd who can relate to this. Love you, Jake. Uh, Roy Jones. Even though we always tried to prevent this war between each other, one day in 2009, in the backyard of my dad and Karen's at Jake's graduation party, we had the kind of argument that just could no longer be settled with words. And so, the only way to settle it was a backyard takedown challenge. Now, for anyone who knows Jake, Jake was always the much better wrestler. But you see, at this time, his brother was a beast too. I was 230 pounds, strong and fast. I started college football that year and Jake might have been 170. If there was ever a day that I was going to put this man in his place, that was the day. We battled back and forth like two wolves for about five minutes in the hot summer sun. And anybody who knows what it's like to wrestle in a hot summer for five minutes knows that it takes just about everything that you have. And so, Finally, after five minutes of going, Jake slips and falls for just a moment, and my dad pulls a takedown. Now, I've seen Jake wrestle the top quality wrestlers, and I have never seen that man jump up as fast as possible, as fast as I saw him in that moment. And he fiercely argues that I never gained control. And so, we kind of sat there and agreed that I had not really gained control. And so... We go on for another two minutes, completely exhausted, Jake scores a fair takedown on me. Now, I'll never know if I actually had that takedown. It was kind of like the Jesse James 2017 call against the Patriots, the no touchdown call. And so, you know, um, but the truth of the matter is, I knew that I probably didn't want to win that battle. Because if there's anything I know about my brother, it's that he would have died before he would have lost to me on that day. And so... Anyone who knows Jake knows this much is true. Oddly enough, there's a bit of serendipity to this story. You see, this was one of the first stories I thought of when I thought of Jacob's speech. And one day, while listening to a podcast, I heard a story about a man also named Jacob from the Old Testament who wrestles with an angel all night long, and when he simply wouldn't give up, his name is changed to Israel which means wrestles with God. And I thought, there's nothing that exemplifies who my brother is more than that. You see, this is my brother, determined and strong. But while tenacity helps, I believe marriage is about more than strength and determination. It's also about gentleness, being a listener, and being a giver. In comes Erica. First time I met Erica at Jacob's home in Pittsburgh, she came with lots of food. Sometimes even I would just get a random message from her saying, hey, 
I found this for you. In the heat of discussion, most people try to make their point, but Erica has a special ability to return to a comment you made, even minutes later, to make you feel completely heard. She has a natural charm to all who know her. The two of them balance each other out in an irreperfect way. Despite Jacob's house fucking superior, over the past few years I've watched my brother soften and show vulnerability. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying uncontrollably for the first time. <laughs> Sorry. I'm crying uncontrollably for the first time in front of me. I'm going to watch you come for me. Well, that was the second time. I've seen him become more mindful and conscious and maybe talk a little too much about going meditating and going to the flow tank. <laughs> Jacob and Erica's love and partnership has now gone to a near annoying level of mind reading and inside jokes and a yes and type of flow that makes you think they're trying out for improv. <laughs> and I'm confident that, I will have, that they will have many years, successful years and abundant years to come. And as I conclude this speech, Let's take a moment to congratulate this new bride and groom with the toast. For a lifetime, for a lifetime of love and fulfillment, to Jake and Erica. I hope the days come easy and the moments pass slow And each road leads you where you want to go And if you're faced with a choice and you have to choose I hope you choose the one that means the most to you And if one door opens to another door closed I hope you keep on walking till you find the window If it's cold outside Show the world the warmth of your smile But more than anything more than anything My wish for you Is that this life becomes All that you want it to Your dreams stay big Your worries stay small You never need to carry more than you can hold And while you're out there Getting where you're getting to I hope you know somebody loves you And wants the same thing You never forget all the ones who love you in the place you left. I hope you always forgive and you never regret. And you help somebody every chance you get. Oh, you find God's grace in every mistake and always give more than you take. But more than anything, yeah, more than anything.
Let's all 
years. We've been married two years. Please step up. I may have to up my numbers a little sooner.